Nah, no, it's just game day. Game day where? <laughs> he is in some kind of zone these first two weeks of the season. Fitzpatrick with time. End zone. Leaping. Marshall intercepted. Going into the 2005 NFL Draft, the quarterback class had some standout guys. Jason Campbell, Aaron Rodgers, and Alex Smith, all potential first round picks. But when we take a look into one particular category, the Wonderlick test, there was a major outlier. The Wonderlick is a 50 question exam. However many you get right, that's your score. The average score is about 20. You only get 12 minutes to answer all 50 questions. Only two to 3% of participants even finish the test in that time. In other words, it's tough. Some of the best NFL quarterbacks score right around the mid 30s, or maybe even a bit higher. In this class, we saw Rodgers at 35 and Alex Smith at 40. They're both pretty smart guys. Then there's the dude from Harvard who finished the test in nine minutes. Ryan Fitzpatrick has the highest score by any quarterback in NFL history. This man was not like the others. Although he did win Ivy League Player of the Year in 2004, he majored in economics at Harvard if there was one thing that I would guess about a Harvard grad, a career in the National Football League would not come to mind. Late in the seventh round of the 2005 NFL Draft, the St. Louis Rams thought, why not, and drafted Ryan Fitzpatrick. He was going to be their third string quarterback. In other words, he shouldn't even sniff the field. The Rams probably thought, it's a quarterback from Harvard who nearly scored a perfect 50 on the Wonder League. Let's just bring him in to pick his brain. There's no way he's actually gonna get into a game though. Week six, first stringer Mark Bolger would injure his right shoulder, promoting Jamie Martin to the starting quarterback. Four weeks later, in a game versus the Houston Texans in November, with the Rams still in playoff contention, everything was starting to fall apart. They were down 24 to three at half, and to make matters worse, backup Jamie Martin would get injured and be ruled out for the game. In steps, the third stringer from Harvard, with no expectations, down by 21, Ryan Fitzpatrick would throw for 310 yards and three touchdowns, finishing the game in overtime with a 54-yard walk-off touchdown. Rams win 33-27. And Ryan Fitzpatrick was named NFC Offensive Player of the Week. He's one of only seven quarterbacks ever to throw for 300 yards in their debut. Unbelievable, right? Ryan Fitzpatrick making his second NFL start. Threw for 310 yards in relief two weeks ago in Houston. Second down and 17. Fitzpatrick with time, airing it out, looking for Kevin Curtis, and it is intercepted. Fitzpatrick on second and 10, intended for Curtis, picked off. Game win streak in jeopardy. Third interception thrown by Fitzpatrick today. Fitzpatrick fires to the end zone. It is picked off by Fred Sloan. Yeah. All in the same day. And now Fitzpatrick to the end zone. Deflected and Sharper has his interception. Now, now he's... Now he can go and just take the shower. If there wasn't a better representation of what Ryan Fitzpatrick is as a player, there you go. It's almost like he's messing with us. Show us something spectacular, then look like the worst thing you've ever seen. It's an art. In the words of urinating tree, Fitzception. He would get benched after the Vikings game and didn't see the field again the following season in 06 and in 2007 was traded for a seventh rounder to the Bengals to be their backup. Carson Palmer, who had started 48 straight games going into the season, would get hurt and Fitzpatrick became the guy in Cincinnati. There he would do good enough to be sent to Buffalo and Fitzpatrick would spend more time there than with any other team. Four years, although it wasn't planned, he was mostly the starter. And this was his time to prove that he could be a consistent starter in this league. He would flash moments of brilliance. During 2010, he became the first quarterback to be down by 17 points, come back, and win by 18 points or more. In 2011, he was named AFC Player of the Month after starting the season on a tear. And following that, the Bills were like, you're the guy. Here's a six year, $59 million contract. That was a bad move. Here's the Fitzpatrick dilemma. If you have no expectation for him, he'll play lights out and dominate the league. But once you expect him to perform or you pay him, then he's gotcha. He will suck until you have no faith in him again. That's a guarantee. After leading the league in interceptions in 2011 and multiple losing seasons later, the Bills opted out of his contract and released Fitzpatrick. The Titans would offer him a backup role in 2013 to Jake Locker, 
he ended up starting more games than Locker. After the season, they dropped him for clipboard Jesus. And next up was the Texans. Here we go again. Starting quarterback injured and in steps Fitzpatrick? We're seeing a pattern here. Although he played well, he did fracture his tibia and ended his season. He was traded to the Jets for pennies on the dollar. Geno Smith, starter. Ryan Fitzpatrick, backup. You know the drill, Geno. How much more difficult did Todd Bowles, who's already a first year head coach, already coming into a situation that it's not ideal offensively. Fitzpatrick under pressure on first down. He takes off. He's inside the 10. After the greatest season of his career, the Jets were fooled and they decided to pay Fitzpatrick. They did eventually bench Fitzy in favor of Geno Smith, which wouldn't even last a full half of football before he got hurt. I'm telling you, it's as if he holds a curse on whoever's the starting quarterback. If you're a fan in the NFL and Ryan Fitzpatrick signs with your team, your starter is going down one way or another. It's actually frightening how it happens every time. Okay. He's in his second year in Tampa. Jameis Winston is the starter, but he's suspended for three games. The last thing they would need down there is a quarterback controversy. Oh wait, Fitzpatrick's averaging over 400 passing yards a game? I guess the only question is when? When is this saga going to end? Brian Fitzpatrick is the master magician, the car trick king that fools you into thinking he's something special. If you fall for it and you buy in, you're doomed. The Amish man will get you. He'll get you every time. That's what Fitzception is all about. I still haven't seen it, so I don't know how ugly it is, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. We're just out there playing. My helmet came down on me. Uh... <laughs> is this live? Of course.